Welcome to our book review of Things No One Else Can Teach Us by Humble the Poet. Humble the Poet is a rapper, a spoken word artist, poet, a blogger, social media influencer. In this book, he shares a bunch of little life lessons accompanied by witty quotes. It's a great book for anybody that's interested in the self-development field or just a good read. Did you enjoy this book? Yes. I, I, I truly did. Um, nice. We just talked about this. I, I had to listen to a good part of it because I wasn't able to finish on time for this morning. Um, so while reading or while listening, I truly enjoyed this book. It's simply written. It's, like you said, witty. Uh, lots of quotes. Easy to remember. Um, I think it's a good introduction to self-help book uh, genre for anyone that's looking to get into this kind of book. It's a bit different from what we... Uh we typically do. It's a more like a philosophical book, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, it took me like a good 30 to 40 pages to uh, get into that mood, I guess. At first, like, ah, uh, you know, but then at one point, like, it's well written. Like, it's a, it's super easy to follow for a, like a long period of time. Like, there mm -hmm. are some books that are, they're good. They're teaching you some good stuff. But like, after 20, 30 pages, you're like, oh, okay, this is stuff. I have to take a break. Not with this one. It, yeah. It's it's such a Canadian book too. It like is. The guy is so well spoken. You can tell that he's humble, right? Obviously, and uh, just very um, open about his feelings. Very raw yet simple. Did you guys know him before that book? No, I didn't. I, I uh, started listening to a few of his tracks. Um, again, it's it's Canadian hip hop. I'm. It's all right. It's not what I'm into. Um, I prefer him as a writer versus. Yeah. For me, that rapper. was one thing. Like I found it difficult to get into the the idea of reading this book. Like when you recommended it last week, I was like, Ah, oh, this this book's written by a rapper. You know, it's going to be about the thug life, and you know, <laughs> wow. it was. Uh, what the hell? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's what I expected. I, I was really excited for this because rappers are usually well spoken and they write in a way that, that keeps things interesting. Yeah, and proof is there. And so it, yeah, changed my mind. But that, that's one thing about rappers, like the a big a big part. And I'm not into They're rap poets. either. But like I don't I don't enjoy the music. But the, uh, the 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 words are typically well thought of because it's a big chunk of it. Yeah. Like most singers that are popular out there. Like half their songs, they're not written by them. You mm -hmm. know, they yeah. they they they're, they're propose a song and they all they do is sing that song, right? So like it's it is um, good rappers or good writers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his um, life story is really interesting too. I mean, um, from a kid being raised in Toronto, uh, I don't. He doesn't mention that he was poor, but obviously he wasn't rich. Moved out to LA, joined a fellow Canadian uh, YouTube. Uh, superstar Lily Singh. I don't know if you guys ever saw no. her videos. She's funny. Uh, cute looking Indian girl. Um, I think she's now a stand-up comedian as well. So I, I really enjoyed this. Um, I don't know where to start because there's so many good topics in there. Well, and a lot of it reminds me of books we just read too. Here's uh, something that we could do. that would be fun. Um, why don't we mention a few chapters that we like? Sure. And discuss on, you know, the lessons from Humble and maybe compare it to our life lessons. Sure. So uh, any any recommendations to start? I, I'd like to start with, um, he talked about having an open mind. Okay. Uh, and the, like his example is perfect because he was saying that he grew up being homophobe yeah. at the same time that he was a minority. So he was judging people for judging him for being a minority, yeah. but he was judging yeah. homophobes. Right, like he, he just saying, like I, I, I was closed-minded. That's what I was thought when I, uh, you know, when I was raised. Yeah. And uh, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. Like he just he doesn't like he does not understand why he would think like that, but he clearly did, and very uh, for, with like until he was what 16, 17. So yeah. like it's uh, for a long time. This this is a great example of how this book is relatable to to anyone really because. Even for ourselves, where we grew up and 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 uh, the town we lived in, it was the same thing. Like I didn't know anyone who was homosexual or lesbian, so it was an unknown territory for for most of us mm -hmm. where we grew up. Right? Same thing for him. So 
I think what he says too is, is that he was a homophobe without realizing it because that's how he was brought up. That's it. You know, it's very relatable. If you mm -hmm. weren't brought up that way, you don't know about that. that you know, mm -hmm. I, well, I say lifestyle, but he says it well when he says, you know, all those things cleared up in his mind when he was able to ask questions. Yeah. You know, without you know, being afraid of offending somebody. Mm -hmm. So it's important. So do you mean uh, the day that uh, a guest walked into his classroom? Yeah, and they asked him had, all the questions yeah, they exactly. had in their mind, like, uh, yeah, you know, and then the guy explained that there's no difference between the love. Right. You know? I, I love the example that he gave. He wrote, uh, he asked the girls, what's your perfect, in your mind, what's your perfect man, your perfect boyfriend? So they wrote a bunch of things on yes. the blackboard. And then they asked the guys, same thing. And then he says, well, is there one thing on one side that could not be on the other? And that's when they realize love is love, right? True. Yeah, and then he's like, well, I'm gay, and yeah. I have these, these exact same thing. I'm yeah. looking for the exact same thing in my, in my partner. Yeah. Okay. I, I truly hope <laughs> that uh, teachers out there are going to listen to that book just to be able to use that example. Yeah, he's like, this is This is a too. lesson that people can have that, uh, that you should learn when they're younger than 16 or something. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, when we were in grade school, we had a similar experience with a, um, a, a narcoman, uh, okay. somebody who was uh, addicted to drugs. Okay, yeah. So yeah. he was there, he was super honest. I was in third or fourth grade. They call that, uh, that was a special program that we had in, in yeah. school. I had the same thing. Well, yeah. I believe we were at the same school. It was in yeah. Wendover. Every, like, <laughs> I think this was in grade five, I think. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, yeah. So the guy uh, was super upfront. He said, you know, he had a lot of fun like MVP, <laughs> doing lots of drugs, right, but he also, uh, remember? yeah, m must yeah. have been something Anyways. like that. Cool. So the guy was explaining, you know, super honestly, yeah, drugs are a ton of fun, but you know, you don't want to get into this. <laughs> there are tons of fun. You don't want to get into this lifestyle because you know the the yeah. back end is is not fun. And I remember the kids just we were all asking questions, you know. Like, yeah. I kind of had the same thing too. The uh, my eighth grade teacher, her uh, at the time, her son was an addict, and uh, it was an example of, you know, th this guy's a, he's a good kid. Like it can happen to anybody, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, there's no shame in it. It's just yeah. you know, let's deal, let's deal with the problem and then let's move on with it. But like at first, you know, at home I was thought of like drugs are bad, drugs are bad. And then so you, you're thinking that anybody that's doing drugs are like bad people. Yeah. But it just it's it happens, right? Yeah. Like you get dealt a, that hand, you you know, you try it once, then you get addicted, and then you, you're stuck in that circle. And it's just like, let's accept it, and then let's just try to solve the problem. Yeah, yeah. don't try to hide it. Mm -hmm. you know, no, but, no, uh, no. I think I think it's it's a good introduction to the next point that I think you wanted to to talk about the uh, school of life. Yes, you pay your tuitions to the school mm -hmm. of life. Yes, um, that was chapter number eight. What, is that is that it? I wrote it down somewhere, but I I I really enjoyed that because I could relate to it. So well, much. we all have examples yeah. like that. Like the, sure. the point that he made is that uh, he I guess took some bad decisions or decisions that you know didn't uh, facilitate his uh, his problem at the time. But instead of just feeling sorry for himself, it's just he crossed it off as uh, the tuition fee for the school of life. He learned exactly. a lesson, right? And yeah. I think everybody can relate to that we all have stuff that we've done that we're you know not proud of or that bad we, idea or we should have uh, thought about something else instead and then bang instead of you know you just realize that let's not do it again and that's your lesson for next time yeah for sure um i mean i i have an experience that i lived through when i was 20 years old i lost my license for drinking and driving so yeah it cost me a whole lot lost a few years of driving around i feel like i ruined my early 20s in some way, but I use that as an example to my friends and family members to not drink and drive, right? So I paid my tuition, I learned, I went to the school of life for that simple, simple uh, Cost you a lot, but you know, it's a hell of a fee, up. but yeah. yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So for me, this chapter really uh, hit me, for sure. Just like any other course that you pay for, sometimes you can ignore the lessons, Yeah. right? But it's important to realize that you're paying for this, mm -hmm. so you might as well mm -hmm. learn from it. Absolutely. Right. Do you guys have some good examples to share? Or? Yeah, I think um, the loss of my father-in-law comes to mind. Yeah. You know, a guy smoked cigarettes his entire life and uh, died of lung can cancer. So I'm doing my best to honor 
the, the memory and to do the best of the situation. Um, I mean, it's, it's a heavy price to pay, but I'm trying to learn yeah. the lessons from that, you know. So cigarettes are just a, a no-go for me. Mm -hmm. for, even if they were a casual, you know, smoke here or there, now it just doesn't, Not anymore. Hap doesn't happen yeah. anymore. Not anymore, yeah. You know, so you got to pay attention to the tuition. Exactly, and, and tuition doesn't necessarily mean that it costs you something. You know, like yeah. it's, it's, it's learning the lesson through, you know, hardships or, or fuck ups or whatever, yeah, name yeah. it, right? But just like uh, your story of drinking and driving, all our friends learned from that lesson. Yeah, I right? think most of them did. You know? <laughs> so I, then, yeah. the, the importance of reading the title again, things no one else can teach us, is the fact that you have to live through these situations to learn. You can try to learn from someone else for sure, and, and I, I'm sure that his intention is just that but like for for an example like mine if you don't live it you don't learn 100 percent through it you know yeah so i agree my first big lesson that i can remember um i got a but it was my first sales manager position and i i thought i'd be going in there being you know the new king Right, like that in my mind, I had the big job. I was there. People would listen to what I'd say, but the reality is that these people had been there for longer than I had been alive. Right? They didn't care about me. I was just a new kid coming in to tell them what to do, and they, you know, they didn't like that. It took me six months to realize it. Yeah. But then after, like, um, life is not black and white. It's not because you're here. The other, like, you feel you're here, or you feel it should be this way, but the other people don't care about it. Like there's just if it doesn't fit their mold, well, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. So like it, it took me a long time to realize I have to work with them instead of you know yes my ways sometimes was a better way, mm -hmm. but if they don't want it like they have like I have to understand that they so don't buy in. If they don't buy in, they don't buy in. Like it's not gonna work. So it's them buying in was more important than me having the right way, and uh, yeah that's it. And like I apply that for not just work like everything else that brings me to another chapter that i'd like to talk about chapter number seven when you know your why the how becomes a lot easier mm -hmm. and i think that us um you know as uh, business owners we we all participate in this thing called an accountability group yeah and we get our why really really zeroed in and it makes the tasks and the how so much easier mm -hmm. right yeah. So um, I know you've been drilling this for a few weeks, but like this week I got back on the train of like writing down, okay, this is what I want to accomplish, you know, and here are the tasks and like things are clicking again. For it's a past, lot easier. For the past few weeks, you know, I got away from that, but now I'm back on board and like it makes yeah. everything easier. Yeah. I think... Uh, you guys want to share your why? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, my why... Can you have more than one why? I guess I my, so. my why would be family. Um, you know, my life's about to change. I'm about to have my first kid. So obviously my, my big why is to be able to provide for my family. But it, there's also a tie-in with another chapter where he speaks about uh, getting his parents to meet their childhood um, hero, I guess. I forget the name. I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, Bollywood. Uh, Darmendra, yeah. a Bollywood uh, superstar. So it reminds me of you know, I say family because that's my big why. So a few months ago, I was able to purchase Celine Dion tickets for my mom and my grandmother to send them together to go see the concert. So if, if I can help out my family or friends um, in any way possible making stuff happen for them, like mm -hmm. simple act of sending them to a concert, it, it makes me feel so freaking awesome. Like it feels I agree. good. And it, it's not about showing off that I can do that. It's about giving back because they, they, they gave me my entire life, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's yeah. my big why is family for sure. Mine is, uh, it's probably the most common out there, I know, uh, but it's just, it's freedom. Freedom to choose whatever I want to do uh, when I want to do it. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy working, so it's not like it's something that I'm going to stop doing, but um, maybe at a different level in five to ten years. So, like, I'm trying to build a foundation so that I can buy my plot of land that I've always wanted. I can decide that I'm spending one year traveling abroad with my wife and two kids. I can, like, so I, I'm, like, when I'm, 
I'm visualizing this when it's tough because there are some times that, you know, you have your five calls to do and then after three of getting, you know, punched in the, in the mouth every time, well, then you're like, ah, do I really want to do that fourth? Well, then, you know what, you look at your board and you're, you, 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 you see the trees and you see freedom written in big there, like, you know what, it's time to do it because if you don't do these, well, you, you fall back with the regular pack and then you, you're not going to achieve it. So yeah. That's my just... Being able to choose when I want to do stuff is very big. Or I want to send my family to a Celine Dion concert. Mm-hmm. All right, take out my credit card. It's not an issue, yeah. right? So Freedom. stuff like that. Freedom yeah, to I choose. Think that's a solid. To solid choose problem. anything. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. So the big why is something that has eluded me for a long time, and you know I've been scratching my head and trying to figure out what is it. You know, does it need to be super big? And I've come to realize that. The why is something that evolves over time. Mm-hmm. You just mentioned, you know, you can have a kid in a few weeks. So that's like a now thing, right? Yeah. So for me, it, it varies. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be like buying a house or, you know, I'm sure down the road when I'm going to have kids, that's going to become the why. Yeah. But the main one, um, and I've always had this, but it really solidified when I read the David Goggins book is I want to not leave any potential on the table for my life, right? So, so if, I, if I imagine myself checking into heaven one day and, you know, St. Yeah. Peter's there, he's like, oh, well, you were supposed to do this and this and this, yeah. but uh, you sort of slacked off along the way. Like, that's like a thought that, like, motivates me. So mm-hmm. just reaching your full potential is, is the main why. That's really good. And in... Um, Gary Keller's book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, he talks about one big why and then a bunch of different different little whys, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think mm-hmm. that's that's sort of my model of I think, the why universe. I think that's, that's mm-hmm. solid. And for me, up until a few months ago, my big why was just freedom, but in another form was to be able to do whatever I wanted to do. Whatever it is that I wanted to do, I was able to do it. Like, fun was my big why. For the longest and time, my why was going out to the bar. And, exactly. You know, yeah. being able to buy and a table and VIP service. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not a, an important enough why for you to keep going. Well, it doesn't motivate you for long. No, exactly. Yeah. Did for a few years, but then uh, it <laughs> yeah. gets... Uh, a few years too many. A few years too many. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fun is still a part of it. And it's another, another chapter that he talks about how fun is important. Yeah. So um, I know for us, the reason why I like what I do, sometimes I wake up in the morning and a job's a job, right? But I'm always having fun because of the people that I'm surrounded with, more and more, actually. So for me, I wake up in the morning and I'm excited about the day, most days, because you can't be on it 100%. And you guys know once or twice a week, I'm... I'm grumpy as hell, so <laughs> it happens, but doesn't mean that... We, we all get a call from you once a week, and then... <laughs> <laughs> I need to vent. Um, if I was a Smurf, I'd be wearing a red cap, you know? But you know what? I, I, oh, no. I, I learned... I, is that grumpy Smurf? At first, I remember at first, I was like, why is he like that? But then I, you know, got to know you, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I almost I enjoy it and now. then I'm good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm having fun, and I'm mm-hmm. sure you guys are as well. Of course. No, our, our group of friends is is uh, is shaping up to uh, to support our big whys. Yeah. Right. Papa and Smurf was not the grumpy Smurf, was he? No, I think it was just grumpy Smurf. Yeah. Grumpy Smurf. Fuck. Anyways. But we're and, and and I think we're at a point too that we're able to tell each other off like, uh, yeah, yeah. dude, shut up, like, yeah, yeah, you know, you're looking at this wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I truth. call you to complain, and you're you're always saying. I can't be around negativity. It brings me down. And then I call you. (laughs) Um, It's okay. We're there to bring each each other other. uh, some some joy and, and, uh, you know, whatever. (laughs) Let's just keep going. (laughs) Any other chapters that you guys wanted to touch on? Uh, There's a bunch of them. There's... Yeah, how many chapters? Know. Thirty-three, thirty-four. There's thirty-four chapters. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. I that's, think that's good. Very I love that quote. There, there's yeah. a lot of things that we go through in life that are super fun and are over in a flash. How many like, times do you come back from vacation and like you're on your plane back and then you're like, Ugh, yeah, shit, you yeah, know, exactly. Be glad that it happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was in high school, a math teacher told me at the beginning, the first day of school, he said. Remember 
today, this instance, when we finish school at the end of the year, remember when I told you um, that this year will go by so fast. And then at the end of the year, the last year of school, he says, remember when I told you that this year will go by in a flash? So ever since he taught me that lesson, I, I try to, uh, to remind myself that things go by really, really fast, like a vacation. I try to soak it up, soak up as, as much as possible. Uh, enjoy, uh, the, enjoy the now, you know, as much as possible. Yeah, it's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Like I mean, the, next it's thing my, you know, this one of my biggest over. struggles <laughs> to enjoy the present is one of my biggest struggles. Yeah, yeah I, I find myself living in the past quite often. I wouldn't say it's 100% of the time, but I'm always like, oh, man, I did this thing once. It was awesome. I wish I can do it again. And I'm always comparing myself to, yeah. like, past Marty, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to just enjoy the process yeah. Set the goals, focus on your why, and go out there and crush and it. Re reading this, I uh, I started looking at, uh, I started writing notes after a little while because um, not something just to talk today, but on how to start enjoying my work more. Because uh, he, he spent quite some good time on enjoying the process. And mm -hmm. uh, if you want to enjoy it, you got to make sure that it's... Uh, your work is what you like to do. So yeah. I, uh, I started jotting down stuff that I can try that I don't like that I can transfer back to my assistant mm -hmm. and me focus on what I am actually good at and love doing. Um, yeah. And just to make a process fun. And yeah. then there's some things it's like, okay, so this sucks. How are we going to make this bad thing or thing that's boring to do? Fine. All right. Well, let's, we're done. We, I don't know, ring a bell, take a shot. We make a joke. We, we go for a run, like whatever. Like it's just like make, make it fun or make it that the, the reward is fun. You know, yeah. reward yeah. yourself more. Yeah. But oh, you said something uh, interesting there where, you know, something might not be enjoyable to you. So you talk with your assistant and you say, you know, what do you think about this? And for them, it might be enjoyable because different people have different interests. So the, the perfect example for that is uh, like we, we have cleaners that come every other week at our home. And uh, I, I was talking like I, at one point I mentioned like I'm so glad you guys come. And she's like, oh, you know what? We enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Like I enjoy this. I'm just listening to my music. I'm doing my own thing. It's so much better than sitting at a desk. Yeah. Like, oh, all right. That's, that's true. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see this. Yeah. I, like I always, I don't want to say pity them but i'm like oh that's not a job i'd want to do i, I don't hate that. Do that i never yeah. want to do that and then wow they're there they're a couple they're spending all their days together they're cleaning homes together they're in, they're actually enjoying it they're laughing they're telling jokes while they're doing it yeah. i'm like wow okay yeah. like it's just yeah we're they're, not all the same they're enjoying the that's process, it right mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, another chapter um i want to talk about is chapter number nine uh, don't focus on the pot of gold focus on the rainbow Mm -hmm. So the process, right? So I don't know if there's any examples that you guys can think of. Well, we, we just read The Alchemist, and, and that's the entirety of the story, is focus not only on, on the, the end game, but like the journey. So enjoy the journey before you get to the pot of gold. And I think that's an important lesson because sometimes we're, we're so focused, we're zooming in on, on our goals that we forget to enjoy what's happening around us. Yeah. Like in The Alchemist where he walks around with a spoon filled with oil, right? Yeah. So another great book. Have you read that book? No, I no. recommend it. I, I, I read on it, mm -hmm. like a bit of summaries here and there, but I've never read the book entirely now. Mm -hmm. So he, he uh, spends the entire book chasing this, mm -hmm. this treasure and uh, he eventually gets the treasure, but he realizes that the journey was as big of a gift. Yeah. And uh, the treasure is, is a nice bonus, but you know, the, the journey was the... And it's, the gift? and it's the only way I believe that you're actually going to get there yeah. and enjoy it. Because one thing that we're, I like, I've achieved targets before and you know, you work a whole year to achieve that target and you get there and it's freaking awesome. But then two days later, it's done. Right. Yeah. Then you're moving on to the next target so that like, it's not as rewarding as you would think to yeah. hit your goals. You're looking for new problems. To well, get into. exactly. So, like, you have to enjoy it. And the per like the best example, in my opinion, and it, it like it affects so many people is working out. Oh, and yeah. like I like I two years ago, I had never really worked out in my life. 
like there was just me i'd work out i'd subscribe to gym go twice look like a dumbass because i didn't know what to do and like having to ask people how this machine worked and i felt like an idiot so i left and never came back i had always been skinny and then it was just it i didn't enjoy it there was no like the i had a goal but there's no way i would get it but now with running and things like that i I have a program, I know when I'm gonna run, I subscribe to stuff that are fun, I'm talking to people that are running, we're you know, commenting on our runs, we're, or just bike, and like it's, the, the process is fun, and I, I tried to figure out, and like actually, I, there was a YouTube video on that, and it was like how, um, why running sucks and why it doesn't have to, and mm. I'm like, ah, okay, I'll listen to that, like it's a good 12 minutes, so, and then he just, for him, was music, it, it, it was like, I have, it, one day it's in the woods, one day it's there, one day it's there, and then the next day it's, it's on my treadmill. And he said, I hate the treadmill, but you know what? I'm more thankful to go in the woods after I went on my treadmill. So it's always mm -hmm. mixing it up and making True. it fun. So, and it made it fun for me Yeah, because of that. Yeah, Cool. You boys ready Powerful. to uh, rate this book? Yes, sir. Maybe um, I'll go first this time. Sure. I, I figured that uh, I usually go last these last few books. Um, super interesting book. Like I said, when Chris recommended this book, I wasn't super enthused, um, just because of my preconceived notions that, you know, rapper was going to be about the thug life, but <laughs> I just, the thug life. the thug life, um, not at all. I mean, uh, this guy, um, doesn't look like he's going to be relatable to me. He's uh, wearing the turban. He's got the big Sikh beard. And There's a picture of him at the end. Yeah. And uh, turns out that, you know, we go through a lot of the same struggles. For sure. Humble and I. Uh, good old boy from Toronto. You know what's interesting? He's not religious anymore. Oh, right? I thought he, he mentioned that he was super religious. No, but he started being very yeah. religious. And then uh, when he opened his mind to it, so he challenged people to try to understand why somebody would not be religious. And then after a while, he realized that, you know, maybe he shouldn't be religious anymore. He mm -hmm. realized some stuff. And, uh, but so he's not super religious anymore. He's very um, philosophical. Oh, yeah. But uh, he's not religious, but he still wears a turban and have that beard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, but it's an identity, right? The. Yeah. Um, yeah, the guy turns out he's like a lot more like me than I thought he would be. And um, the book itself is super good. Um, I would definitely recommend it to anybody that's interested in the self-development um, field. And I'm going to have to rate this one a 4.2. Very good b book. Um, I would compare it to something like Make Your Bed by the Admiral McNally. Mm -hmm. McNally. Um, yeah, just a great book with some good uh, philosophies in there. It's a really good uh, witty quotes, for sure. Inspirational, for sure. Hmm. I have uh, I have a 4.2 as well. I uh, smiled when you mentioned 4.2 because that's what I had. But <laughs> no And uh, talking about quotes, I, ha I, I wrote one down because it's the first time I ever heard that quote, and it's freaking hilarious. Stroking your ego is like masturbation without satisfaction. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah. It's true. That's towards the end, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. stroking your ego, like, it's just, it's, it's you're never going to be satisfied. It, right? Yeah, makes sense. There, there's, there's a whole lot of powerful quotes. Lots there, of good, good quotes. You're and right, though. That's one I've never heard before. It's never heard that. I, like, I, yeah. I, I, I actually, I, I was doing the dishes, listening to the audio book, <laughs> and uh, my wife was right next to me doing something else, and I had a big <laughs> laugh out loud, and then she's like, what? <laughs> so mm. don't masturbate your ego. You won't find a happy ending. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to invent it. It's a good quote. spin. <laughs> yeah. So um, I didn't write it down, but I had a number in mind before we sat down. So 4.4. I strongly recommend this book because it's well written and it's it's for anyone out there. Whether you're into this kind of thing or not, um, it's a definite must read in my opinion. You have to have this one in your collection just because I'm sure this guy read most of the books we've read. It sounds like it anyways. You know, if we're going to talk about Compound Effect, which is your favorite book, I can see uh, parts of the Compound Effect in there when he talks about the way he um, works, right? His work ethics and stuff like that. So 
for me, 4.4, a strong 4.4. I really like this. Um, he's got other books that I'd, I'd like to uh, give, a, give it a shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's next on the... Uh, do we know? I, I believe we we've got one coming up next week. Uh, after. I'm not sure if it's next week or the week after. Okay. I, uh, so still, he needs to confirm. Okay. So I know for Rami and I, we're going to try to find a sports-related book that has a business aspect to it. Okay. So I know we talked about uh, Mamba Mentality, uh, Kobe Bryant's book. Um, I showed Rami Mike Tyson's book that I would really like to read. So we'll see. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll pick a sports-related business book. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'll be all for this week, ladies and Cheers. gentlemen. So um, thanks for tuning in to our book review of Things No One Else Can Teach Us by Humble the Poet. And we'll see you next week.